I found a simple way to prevent Android phones from draining the DJI remotes during flight. Let me explain. Hi guys, it's Zoli here. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video I'm going to show how to modify this cable connecting the DJI remote to an Android phone to prevent the phone from draining the battery of the remote. So I'm going to use the top plug which connects straight to the remote and I'm going to strip the insulation there to access the red wire in the cable. This is a lightning connector uh, cable because that's that's the thing I'm not using actually I'm an Android guy and the other one I have modified over a year ago so this is where I can show how it is actually being done so just strip the cable there so we have access to to actually control the flow of electricity in this cable I'm going to put some shrink wrap on this. I'm using the same method I showed you in my earlier video because I can't pull this tube through that big plug. So I just uh, cut it open, glue it with some super glue and then use a lighter. You see, as I told before, it just works fine. So now I'm switching back to the cable which I have modified long time ago I had to take it apart so that you can see it at that time I opened up the plug actually not the cable itself and here are the connections so that on the left is coming from the remote the positive that's the red wire and then goes towards the phone on the bottom you can see this picture which is the reference to the one which you might be doing and there's a ground connection up there you will see why and here is the magic component it's just a silicon diode i'm using one n4007 but it can be any silicon diode and i connected it on the plug now i'm just testing how it works without the diode because i'm actually just connecting the two points there on the red like normal like there would be no change done you could see the current draw was around 360 milliamps and now i'm going to include the diode in the circuit it is connected now but there is almost no current draw and the software starts anyways so the data connection is there I check it with another phone. This is a Huawei Honor 9. And I'm just replacing the probes with some clips. So first I'm connecting it like normal, like nothing happened. 300 milliamps. And the software starts. The DJI Fly app. And now I'm including the diode. You see, there's almost no current draw. There's a little bit, but not much. And DJI Fly starts also. Now, because I want to make this cable even better, I took a USB plug with a piece of wire here. Because and in the Mavic Pro, it was possible to... It had two USB ports, the remote. So it was possible to charge the remote and the phone during flight with a power bank. On the Mavic Mini it is not possible, there is only one USB port on the remote. So I'm modifying this, adding this to the cable which connects the drone to the remote so that during flight with the power bank I'm able to charge the phone because obviously now the phone is not being charged by the remote. So I cut off every other wires than the blue, uh, black and the red and I'm going to solder the ground connection the black to the ground point on this socket if you're doing it with a cable then of course you have to expose the black wire also on the other side 
and the red will go to the positive. But first I'm going to connect, I'm going to solder these two pins in the red line. These two pins will make it possible for me with the help of a jumper to sort of undo this mode at any point. If I put a jumper on this, then whatever has been changed on this cable is going to be kind of undone. It, the cable will just operate as a factory cable. And now comes the diode. I'm going to solder it there. And note that the mark, the end of the diode has to be towards the phone. Otherwise it will not work. So when the jumpers are not connected on the pins, the diode is in circuit. When the jumpers are connected, then basically the diode is being bypassed. So it just becomes a straight wire there. And this positive connection from the additional USB plug has to go on the end of the diode, which goes towards the phone. It's also important. So now I'm testing. These tests were done uh, one after another. I just put them like this to save some time here. So on the left side, there is the sort of unmodded cable. You can see that the jumper is on on the left side on the remote. And on the right side is the modded version where the diode is in circuit. So the remote has been charged full in both cases. And now I'm going to start the test on the left side and basically as the remote has been charging the phone the phone's battery was going down anyways but very slowly like during the whole test it went from 66 percent to 61 percent now you see the red blinking led on the left side on the remote don't bother with that it's just one of my modes i did on the remote because i was going crazy from this beeping all the time so I just replaced the buzzer with uh, with an LED so there the remote gave up after two hours and on the right side as you can see we are almost at the three hours mark and there are still three LEDs on the charge indicator of the remote and as you can see the connection is there because you can see on the phone's screen what the drone is seeing and yes, if you do such test, the drone has to be cooled. There is a fan on the right side, which is constantly blowing air on the drone because otherwise it would overheat. But you see at four hours, the phone battery died, but the remote was still halfway. So around eight hours it can, can do. I don't know how it works with other phones. This was one test with this Huawei. And you see here is the mod on the cable. I plug it into the to a power bank and both units start to charge if the jumper is connected to the pins. If the, the jumper is not connected, then only the phone is going to charge and that it does during flight also. So here is how it would look if you would just do this mode for yourself on a cable without destroying the plug. So the jumpers, the pins are going just like that on the two cables and the diode is going to connect the two pins together. Same thing, note that the mark on the diode is towards the phone. Just like that. It is as simple as that. There's really nothing more to it. And the final part is the jumper, of course. But would this work with other drones too? Yes, I did buy the Mini too. I wanted to test also how it goes with the Mini 2 controller, but I didn't want to destroy those brand new nice cables. So I just bought a Type-C Type-C cable. And I'm going to do the same mod on this one. So I'm removing the insulation here. Of course, the cable doesn't have to be as thick. This is a Gen 3.1 USB cable with extra shielding and everything. It completely reminds me of the old coaxial cables used for the television. So I removed the shielding here and the red wire is exposed. I'm going to cut it. 
and just for good measures I'm actually putting back the the shielding here so I just kind of organized the foil this foil and this uh, wires back this is how we did it back in the days with TVs and I'm using the same method which I learned back then is actually to use some aluminium tape this is even though it doesn't look like that but it is the metal itself it's a metal foil with the glue on it so it conducts it uh, and it shields very well this is not necessary I believe but uh, why not make it perfect if I ever want to use this cable for really high speed data transfer which I doubt is needed for this uh, specific application so I just cover it with this tape and then we are going to shrink wrap this too I'm using uh, if I'm correct a 10 millimeter shrink wrap which I slit all the way through same deal because it's hard to mm, pull it through the plug it's actually impossible so I'm just gonna cut it in here for the wires and then comes again the good old super glue so I'm going to glue this part to the cable just like that and one more line of super glue to close up this whole repair there and of course it's a heat shrink so the lighter it works very well guys this uh, this method of uh, because so often we need this that uh, it's impossible to pull through the shrink wrap or heat shrink tube but we would like to use it this is the way to do it now I'm going to test this cable with a few phones with this mini 2 controller same setup you see I soldered the diode there and uh, I'm going to check it first normal mode without the diode in the circuit when I turn on the remote you will see the current draw it's around 250 270 milliamps and the DJI Fly app starts automatically that shows that data connection has been established between the remote and the drone I'm just going to see what the drone sees on the screen and that is actually my YouTube page feel free to subscribe guys but for real I mean it doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out a lot if you feel that this is valuable content just hit that subscribe button so now the diode is in line you see the current draw it's like 20 milliamps or even less and DJI fly started let's see if there is really data flow can we see what the drone sees yes there's my hand on the screen of the phone so it works so that's with the Samsung Galaxy S10 the next one to try is my wife's Xiaomi Mi 8 same thing first without the diode like like without the mode basically there it is 175 milliamps is a little bit less than with the Samsung it was and the DJI fly started now with the mode diode in series we are talking four and a half milliamps that's really nothing and the DJI fly started let's see what the drone sees yes it's there so there is full data connection and this is the Huawei Honor 9 this is the last phone I test here these are the phones I'm this is actually the phone I'm using uh, 
It's a dedicated drone phone, this Huawei I'm using for that. So I don't know if it works on every Android phone. I tested it with all the Android phones I have home and it worked with all of them. There may be some, some exceptions, this I don't know. But uh, if you try this mod, guys, I would like you to write in the comments like, oh yeah, on that phone it worked, on that phone it worked, or oh, for some reason on that phone it did not work or whatever, because it helps out everyone, I think. So now I'm just completing the cable for the Mini 2 controller. I'm soldering in the diode and uh, pins. It's important to note that the marking on the diode always points towards the phone. So mark it on the cable to know which end goes where. So now I'm just going to cover it with some electrical tape. I think two layers will do just to keep it a little bit less exposed. And here is the completed cable. And that is all what I have for you today, guys. Please stay tuned for other upcoming DIYs, hacks, electronics projects and drone videos. And yes, by popular demand, the Mini 2 hack videos are coming. If you have anything to say or if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment sections. And uh, guys, how about a like? share or maybe even subscribe to my channel. I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.